We begin tonight off the coast of Italy where crews are searching for survivors from that cruise ship that ran aground and foundered on Friday night. 4,000 passengers and crew were on board. Italy's Coast Guard says at least six people are dead, and tonight the number of people missing has risen to 29. They include Jerry and Barbara Heil of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, a retired couple who raised four children and dreamed of this eight-day Mediterranean cruise. But the voyage of the Costa Concordia lasted only hours. Nearly 1,000 feet long with 17 decks, she is now off the west coast of Italy, aground on the island of Giglio. We sent Alan Pizzi there today. Hope of finding any survivors, including a missing American couple, is fading fast. Divers have been risking their lives to search flooded passages and compartments. The rescue operation had to be suspended for a few hours today when it was feared rough seas might make the ship slide into deeper water. The captain claimed the hull of the luxury liner was torn open by a reef that wasn't marked on his chart, something maritime officials and local fishermen say is not possible. This coast is just too well charted. It's incredible to think that a liner the size of the Costa Concordia came this close to shore. That rock behind me is what the ship struck. It's what tore a 160-foot gash in its hull. And the ship has come in close before. This amateur video, shot a few weeks ago, shows it doing what is known locally as sailing by the horn, showing off by coming close and blowing the ship's horn to impress passengers. The CEO of the cruise company blamed the captain. We believe it has been a human error here. The captain did not follow the authorized route. When the ship finally ran aground, passengers were frantic. The evacuation drill had never been run. The Lucas family from Alaska knew they were on their own. So we grabbed a few things, mostly our pajamas. They made their way to a lifeboat station. People yes. were panicking and yelling and pushing. They wanted to be the first on the lifeboats. And we were up close. We didn't get on the first lifeboats. Um, and then they were gone, and there we stood. The only way down to other life rafts were the rope ladders that are still hanging over the side. Coming down the ladder was definitely the scariest part. We hopped in, and there's other people coming down the ladder, and they, they cut us loose, and we're gone. And these other people are hanging, you know, 50, 100 feet on the air. And uh, I... There they are, you know. Now that, was... that was scary. And so ends what was supposed to be an idyllic holiday aboard what only a few days ago was one of the most luxurious cruise liners afloat. The captain's lawyers say he is pained and overcome at the loss of life, and tomorrow he will appear in court for the first time. Scott? Alan, what sort of charges would the captain be facing? Well, he can be charged with multiple manslaughter for the deaths, for uh, abandoning his ship, which carries a penalty of up to 12 years under Italian law, and also with causing an accident at sea. Alan, we were hearing earlier today that the black box recorder has been recovered from the ship. What kinds of things will that tell the investigators? tells them just about everything, Scott. It's like the black box recorder on an aircraft. It will tell them the course, speed, position, and many other vital statistics about the ship. And most importantly, we're told, it also records conversations on the bridge, which will tell the Coast Guard and the lawyers and the courts exactly what went on and perhaps why. Alan, thank you very much. We wondered what ships normally do in that area. The maritime insurance company, Lloyd's, drew this map with the normal route between Giglio and the mainland. This is the course that the Costa Concordia took.